Okay, good. So today, we're going to talk about uh, step two. So last time we talked about step one. Uh, step one is where uh, we admit that life is not, uh, 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 that we're powerless, and life has become unmanageable. So that's the foundation step. That's the most important step. People have to get to the point in their life where they realize that they can't manage it. Problems, sarni sakde. So, step one, and then step two. Step two is we came to realize that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. But step one requires that life gets to that point where you're willing to give up the control. Step two is asking something to take over control. But imagine that, right? Like uh, someone said to me, you know, you know, you have a guy, and you're like pulling a sheet, and they're pulling the sheet, and they're trying to take the sheet from you, and they're pulling, you're pulling, it's just going to stay there. So, the, the, so when you have, you know, a one person, and they're pulling the rope, and this other, you know, let's call it a person, is pulling this side, there's tension, right? So, step one, <laughs> funny analogy, but yeah, so step one, step one is kind of like this. No control. The realization that, hey, I'm pulling and it's, it's not going anywhere. The more I try, the more it gets tighter, right? The more you pull the rope, the tighter it gets. Imagine if it's connected to like a big wall. You're never going to, like thousands of kilograms, 10,000 kilograms, no human can pull that. Harder you pull, does the tension in the rope rope cast in the agenda? The more we pull it, does it tighten more? Does it move? It doesn't move. But the tension makes that rope uh, uh, a tense rope is what you use to cut things, right? The tension of that rope is very destructive. So step one is when you say, the more I pull, the tighter it gets. I'm going to stop pulling. <laughs> OK, that's step one. Step two is kind of like a further realization that hey maybe that thing that's pulling maybe maybe it can help maybe something out there can help me if i can't do it on my own maybe something else can and so it's the idea that maybe if i don't so the more I pull it, the worse it gets. Maybe if I think, maybe, maybe this person's not bad who's pulling it. Initially, you're like in a tug of war, right? Someone, someone's going to win, they're going to win, you're going to win, you're both pulling. But maybe, step two is maybe 
that person or that set of people or that force that's pulling isn't bad. Maybe if I just let it go, it might actually help. Maybe there is no war. Maybe it's just all in my head. That's what step two is. It's we came to realize a power greater than ourselves may be able to restore us to sanity. It's not that it restored your sanity, it's maybe, maybe, and that's all it takes. Because if you don't have the control, something has to have the control. It's a very organized universe that we live in. And so step two is simply asking. Um, so we came to realize it's really gentle language a power greater than ourselves so to sanity the, the thing is, is that this is not a hard step if you do this first step well. It's quite natural. The block people have is in life, you get, remember, uh, so that you get victimized, right? Um, so victim, victimization, so when people hit you, hurt you throughout your life, that produces a state of powerlessness, which you then turn into power by hurting others, by doing your own drugs, hurting yourself. Victimization leads to the time of powerlessness, which leads to that bar filling until that point where you say, forget this, I'm not gonna hurt anymore, I'm gonna hurt others or myself because I want to be in control. I, don't, I want this to end. So humans don't like this. No control becomes equivalent to weakness. I'm trying to explain the block that people have with giving up the control. No control, powerlessness, someone tells you that's being weak, you believe it, and at some point you say, Look, I'm not weak. I can do this, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that. I'm not weak. But then that, over 20 years, creates a messy life. Messy, high stress life. Okay? This is the reason why step one and two are very hard. Is because what do you mean I don't have control? I'm powerful, I have control. I can stop drinking if I want. This word is triggering. Powerlessness. And what's an example of weakness is when you ask someone for help. You ask for help. Kiss it to mother, push them. They, 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 they say, you don't know? They give you the smirk, you don't know? And in their mind, in their mind, he's a fool. He's weak. It's not true. When I stop and I, I'm lost and I ask someone for help, that makes me smart. <laughs> So someone asked Donald Trump, you know, like in, in the in the in the in the election uh, with Hillary Clinton there, 
uh, in the debate, they were like, you didn't pay any taxes. And then he says, because I'm smart. <laughs> because there's a tax code. And everyone's like, Donald Trump's not paying taxes. Lots of people don't pay taxes. The tax code is designed, you know, to benefit the rich. <laughs> it's written by the rich. It's, it, it's generally true. And mo most people won't deny that. Now, you know, but asking for help, using the help that's available, you know why the tax code benefits the rich? It's because, you know, the rich own the businesses. The more their businesses get rich, the more money that flows down to the employers. That's the theory. It's up to you if we, you kind of buy that, but that's the theory. So Donald Trump, he said, I don't pay taxes, I'm smart. Because he's using the help that's available. He's not wrong. He's right, actually. A smart person takes help. A smart person, rather than getting lost for three hours thinking he knows the way and he needs to be a man to like prove he knows where he's going, a smart person will just be like, hey, can you help me? <laughs> I'm lost. Please help me. And if that person doesn't know, maybe you can help me. Maybe you can help me. Until he finds someone who can help him or her. That's a smart person. That's a low stress person. High stress is, is I, I'm going to find it. Doesn't matter if we're late, doesn't matter if we're three hours late. That, that ego is like, I got to find it because I can't be weak. Because when I was weak, it, 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 it created all this like horrible stuff. And if I'm weak now, that means all that stuff was true. So I'm going to do this really, really irrational thing. That's how it works. So step one is blocked because people don't want to admit no control. Step two is blocked because they don't want to ask for help. And there's lots of rationales why people don't want to ask for help outside of themselves. There's many reasons why people don't want to ask help for outside of themselves, you know? Could be because there is no help. No one came before. Well, just because no one came before doesn't mean no one's going to come again. That's a logical fallacy. That's not true. Maybe you didn't know how to ask before. Hey, you! Help me! I'm lost! <laughs> Get lost, buddy. Go away. I'm not going to help you. That's how people ask for help. They swear at them. They... Drunk husbands do this all the time to wives. Can you make my food? You swear word, swear word, swear word. Like, <laughs> And then she makes it because she's sick too. It's crazy. But... This is where it comes from. If you don't know how to ask for help, you will not receive the help. That's the easiest way to ask for help is say, can you help me? You know? You don't grovel, you don't get on your knees, because then it's a weakness. Asking for help is not weak. You need to change your brain there. Asking for help is not weak. Repeat that. Asking for help is not weak. Asking for help is strength. Asking for help is not weak. Asking for help is strength. You need to repeat that a hundred thousand times to rewire what you didn't learn. Not your fault. This is all you were taught. Society is very sick because society believes this stuff. You think we have people lining up at our doors asking for help. People avoid addiction mental health centers like the plague, especially ours. No one's like lining up to come here. 
Actually, they are, but then they find out actual like healing and stuff happens. <laughs> oh, I can only come after hours, and I can only uh, I need one-to-one -one counseling, and, and, and all the excuses come. And at some level, at some shade, right, asking for real help. So what do people do? People ask for fake help, or, or rather, they ask for help, but they're not ready to take it. But at least they're going through the motions, much like, uh, you know, you ever make a uh, resolution at the start of the year? I'm, I'm going to go to the gym, yeah? And then you buy a gym membership, you ever do that? And you never go? That's what it is. You, you, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, I'm going to buy a gym membership. But you don't go. It's not real help, it's a step. But having bought the membership, you can be like, yeah, yeah, okay, I got that. That's done. It's the same psychology. It doesn't make any sense when I say it as ridiculous as it is, like this. But when you're in it, I've done it. <laughs> I've done it. I, I, I bought really fancy tools that I, I don't use, right? This is a human psychology thing. We do this. We buy self-help books just to put on the shelf so that we think, yeah, Maybe someday we'll use this. But actually asking for help and not thinking that's weak, that's very deep programming. That is learned through traumatization and victimization over a long period of time. It's hard to do. It's hard to do. Step two. And, and so step one, it's only desperate people that do it. People don't like the concept in, in, in you know, rock bottom. There's a whole thing in, in kind of the, in kind of the, the, the sort of uh, addiction, there's a, there's a debate in the addiction world. Do people need to get to the bottom of their life uh, in order to get help? Some say, that they need to. Some say, no, everyone deserves help. And they're both right. Everyone does deserve help. But in order to get to the point of, power, of like willingness to challenge that belief, asking for help is weakness, things have to get bad. In order to get to that point, when you want help, you have to you know, people, I wish people would come in here and be like, yeah, I'm good, doc. I want to be just a little bit better. I have this weakness, this weakness, this weakness. I want to work on this. And their life is fine. That'd be great if they came in truly willing to work on themselves. But most of the time, people come in with complete disaster crisis lives. There's a reason for that. It's because that's what it takes to push you into thinking about things in a new way. Otherwise, why go to the temple? Why go to the Gurdwara? Why go to the church? Why go anywhere? If your life is fine, people usually go in misery. And that's why. It takes misery to come to the realization that you need help. Now, if you have wisdom, Maybe your life doesn't fall apart. Some people come to us when they're homeless 20 years and they've had enough. Other people, they lose one job and they're ready. They're like, whoa, I can't stop this. And they both benefit equivalently. So the, I, I don't want your, you, you to go to the bottom of your life and, and, and have 20 children with different parents, different things, and messy I'd rather that not be true. I'd rather your life be simple because it's easier to get back on track. I'd rather you be young. You know, 20 years, 18 years old. It's easier then. Life's not as complicated. When you have kids, life becomes more complicated. It's harder to do recovery. But 
when life isn't that complicated, you know, not that many young people can stick it out. So we don't get a lot of people before they're 20. It's easier to do therapy on people before they're 20. They get things just like that. They might be able to repeat this mantra. You know, asking for help is not weak. Asking for help is strength. They might be able to repeat that a thousand times and have it rewired. But life doesn't suck. Life is okay. So they can put up with some of these weird thoughts, drink a bit, they're not, you know, life hasn't fallen apart. So then they do need to get to a point of desperation. Others? We, we just have to come to this point. And if the circumstance, like I said in the step one video, you're, 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 you're holding a rope and the realization that maybe that other person has my best interest at heart. Maybe, maybe life is going to be okay if I just let this thing go. doesn't mean you let it go. That's step three. But at least you think to yourself, maybe. And so then there's a concept of titration. So in step two, they always talk about, so this is a psychological word, titration. So for a lot of people, God is, a, is like a phobia, right? It's called the God phobia. You know, God doesn't exist, because if God existed, my life wouldn't have been so bad. That's a common one. God doesn't exist because my dad was religious and dad was a real jerk. And so, if God's like that, I don't want anything to do with that. That's another common one. Mom, same thing. A priest abused me when I was young. Same thing. So, a lot of things produce a higher power, God, phobia. And so the, the thing is, is that you can get around this in many ways by making it gentle. So there's lots of versions of God. Power is greater than yourself can be anything. It just has to be outside of you and you just have to believe even just a little. So, pick the words. One person, he had a huge issue with God, but he was okay with great spirit. You may say to yourself, same thing. But you know what? What is phobic in you that drives you away from higher power is like a young child. Young children are like this. They don't like broccoli, but if you, and they'll say, I'm never eating broccoli again. And then you just like put a little bit of butter, a little bit of salt. Oh, that's delicious. Don't call it broccoli though. Call it the green stuff. Yeah, 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 I'll take the green stuff. I just don't want, broccoli is broccoli, but an adult knows, but a kid, they, so God phobias, they are very young in the mind. Those phobias develop between, you know, wh whenever the ages were, but typically between like four and, uh, and let's say like 18, right? And let's say you're 40 years old, that part of you that doesn't like that stuff is gonna be a lot younger. And so then, yeah, God is triggering up, great spirit is not, and it works. So change it, change the word. I'm not a priest. Whatever it takes. Now, if you're pretty intellectual and you're like, yeah, same thing, I just don't believe in higher powers. Well, there's all sorts of things that come. So like, one person, his, his thing was ethereal connectedness. <laughs> he didn't like any of these words, but we went into you know, when, uh, when he looked at any positive experience he's ever had in life, this word seems to be okay. So we put it in a prayer, and it worked for him. Never prayed in his life. It brought him some joy, brought him some something. Just this word, ethereal connectedness. 
love. Most people agree love exists. Love is like an echo of the divine. The thing about infinite sources of energy, because that's kind of what we're getting at here, infinite sources of energy, um, playing tug of war with the infinite doesn't really work, right? <laughs> it's, it's kind of an exercise in futility. Uh, but the, the uh, infinite sources of energy, it doesn't matter. So like, let's say God, the word God gets you a thousand points because it's more descriptive of the whole. And maybe this one's a thousand points. Maybe this one's a, this one's a little bit more further away. It's like maybe it's a hundred points. And maybe this one is a little bit big. Maybe it's like 80 points. But when you're dealing with infinite, do you think it cares? It'll flow through whatever conduit because it's far bigger. You just have to start somewhere. If your thing is uh, source, universe, and if you're a different religion, Heck, cool thing, if you're like totally staunch anti-religion, right? And usually that's like one religion. So let's say it's um, uh, um, a common one in the West is like people, like they have a, they have a <laughs> I'm a recovering Catholic. They, they say things like that, where like they've, they've had issues. Then their initial thing, they've got to deal with that. You have to deal with your issues. And in time you will, but you have to start somewhere that's palatable. So you pick something, so a Christian might pray to Allah. That might be not triggering. Source is source. Vahe Guru, Brahma, Vishnu. There's like millions of ways to describe that. And if it's in a different language, oddly enough, these young children parts that are all like sort of phobic, they don't speak those languages, so they don't care. That's why a lot of people like yoga, right? And you go into these Kundalini yoga classes and there's a bunch of, you know, Western white people chanting, Vai Guru, Vai Guru, and, 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 it's, and they're all getting some element of, 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 of source. They're feeling happier. Because their God phobia is not getting triggered. So what I'm trying to say, long story short, is just get over it. If what you're doing isn't working, and you, you're convinced of that, if your way is not working, and if you, if, if you think it's working, continue to try. Do it your way. If it's not working, then the next logical thing is, is ask for help. Some people even go and they say, um, uh, they'll, they'll pray to their motorbike heard that, and I thought this was ridiculous. How can someone seriously pray to a motorcycle? But guess what? It works as a start. Why does it work? Because it's outside of you. And yes, the infinite is manifested in that motorcycle. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's like one point. But it's a point. And it's a start. All you need is a start. Because infinite energy then will kind of start to flow in. And it will do what it needs to do. Motorcycle. Now some people pray to like uh, the community of other people. Like the, like an AA meeting, like the, like the group, the group consciousness, right? Again, it works. Personalize it to you. You have to. That's why they talk in AA about a God of my conception. Because it's not important what the God of that priest's conception is, or that Imam's conception, or the, the, the Granthi's conception. Rab Jarata Anudasda. Granthini. Not your parents. It's you, and it's okay for it to be different than whatever you've been exposed to, especially if that's triggering. 
You have to start from that. And Bill W., he started from that. He was kind of an atheist kind of guy. But then that word, God of your conception, wow, you mean I don't have to rely on some, what someone else's version of it is? I can make my own? Yes, yes, you can. Evidence is as millions of sober people in AA. Obviously they're sober. Obviously they were treatment resistant and hopeless. The medical system had given up on them. That's how the story goes. And then they made it somehow. And they made it because they figured this thing out and they allowed that to come in. And in trauma therapy, there's nothing better than internal resources. Because they're always with you. The trouble with external resources, inside you, always with you, outside of you, maybe going to be there, maybe not. We talk about drama webs. A lot of people's external resources are drama webs. They're webs of up, down, people who are there and then they're not. and. But inside you is always there. If you can harness energy inside you, then that's smart. That's more stable. And outside energy, you can use that to get there. But don't think that anybody on this earth is ever going to be with you forever. Not your kids, not your parents, not your friends, not your wife, not your, not your brother. Oh, well, I sponsored him. <laughs> People betray betrayal is like part of the web. So step two is about building internal resource. Step one is becoming aware that you need something. Step two is picking something that's infinite. That's step two. And you have to do it. Because step two, when you can get something so strong, it can hurt, it can heal these pains. All of this victimization, all of the bad things that you did, it can start to heal those things. So that's why it's important. In complex trauma, PTSD, this is all we do. So you'll notice I didn't really talk a lot about addiction today. Because this is all mental health stuff. Every addicted person has mental health issues. Mental health issues, obviously people have mental health issues. They're human. If you're human, you have the option to connect. If you're a human in misery, you need to connect. And your misery will get less. That's why there's so many different 12-step programs out there. Because it really works. So, that's uh, the, the, the session today. Any questions or comments? I'm going to do some Punjabi again, but uh, uh, questions or comments? Punjabi. Punjabi. I'll translate. What you both? Do you remember something like a uh, uh, step to the system that they have been on Sunday? Like, is it through Mami Gahaga? Like science, we age is candy as a like a very sad big book. Yeah, we age is candy. Okay, as he is strong, Jaldi Kiko Sarvia. Like to see doctor, yeah, now Kosar Naduna, he can connect the Karabi Kushish Karam at that. Like science, we age candy, a kid that Kiko Sarvia, Jasif, Jerry Sadi book, yeah, we can be a behalf. The same million of Bandeki who are Manda. Many Haga you carry, only carry. Bosch is even that even that they can only compare with the other one. Yeah. So uh, basically, he's just saying the science uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, this way is scientific. Uh, it's scientific in my mind because I, I just treat every human as the same. So if anyone comes to me saying that. This didn't work for me, but it, some, but it worked for someone else. I don't think to myself, oh, that method, let's say it's breathing. Okay, breathing works for this person, not this person. Silliness. 
Breathing works for every person. But there's blocks. Those blocks need to be navigated. Breathing embodies you. Maybe being embodied unleashes a deathly terrifying phenomenon. Got to deal with that. And when you deal with that, then you can breathe. And you can have that resource and you'll be ahead. So this step system, if it works for millions of people, what that tells me is it can work for everybody. Because humans are not different in how the mind-body-spirit complex has been created. It's not different. Lose that. I mean, if you're happy with your life and your things are going well, I'm not here to argue with people. I'm here to help desperate people who have tried other things. That's who I'm here to help. I'm not here to help people who think they have their life. Maybe I'm an idiot, and I, and I fully admit that I probably am. The, the, what we want to understand is, is humans, there's principles that govern our existence. And you can take other people's paths. Hey, they did this and they got there. Think to yourself, not, I have to do what they did to get there. What are the principles behind how they did that? That's what this lecture is about. If your life sucks, you need help outside of you. I'm just saying, hey, this help's always there. So, then you can, that's the science of it. Is it works for millions of people? Well, maybe it can work for you. And I'm saying it probably can, if you get rid of the blocks. And that's where the prayer element comes in. And there's other talks uh, that, that we have on using prayer, because if you don't get it, that's okay. Put it in a prayer. God, help me to realize that step two is a thing, even if you don't believe in God. Loving connectedness, help me to believe that somehow step two can help me. Ethereal connectedness, universe, help me to understand step one is true. That'll do it. Do that lots, it'll, it'll start to unblock whatever that is. Because what is different about every human is the blocks. The blocks are different. But you're not your blocks. You're your you're, you're divine princely essence. Um, uh, you know, that's majestic. So... Uh, you're not your blocks. Your blocks are very individual, yes. But that's not who you are. You are what's behind the blocks, uh, which is the essence. So, and the radiance. And so that's what I would, uh, would, uh, would kind of comment is, if you don't get this, if step two is like, how will I ever get that? Then just start doing that. Figure out something that you can say, like love, source of love, universe, community, group consciousness, whatever. Group consciousness, help me understand how step one applies to me. And you do that repetitively, your brain will start accessing. Because that's an act of humility, right? Even that's an act of asking. But no one's going to know. No one's going to judge you for it. You can do it in your bedroom and no one's watching. But ask. Learn to live your life by asking for help. I ask for directions before these Nam Academy videos. I ask for directions all the time. You'll never know, but I ask for help all the time. A strong person asks for help all the time. Uh, yes, comment. Um, you were saying how most people have to hit rock bottom before they realize they or can get past their ego to ask for help. And does that mean like everybody's rock bottom is just kind of different? Like, so if somebody's rock bottom is just something very subtle, that would still be considered their rock bottom? Yeah. yeah. I got a, someone got a DUI. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, now I'm going to go to a meeting, I'm going to get some help, I'm going to, you know. Other people, they have to have five severe domestic violence relationships. And they have to have their head beaten in many times. And then they wake up. I don't know why they wake up. I don't know what, who wakes up. It's not correlated to, like, severity of life. <laughs> some people with severe life, they get it early. Some people with severe life, they get it late. Some people with mild life, they don't get it ever, um, even though their issues are severe. So then uh, the, the, the nature of the rock bottom has everything to do with the blocks. And that's individual. So then, uh, uh, But a wise person will wise up to these things as soon as they hear about it. And so that's, uh, it's better not to have your life fall apart, because it takes more time. 
Your life does not need to fully fall apart to hit rock bottom. But many people can be lost in a delusion that they think they've hit rock bottom. The, the proof is in the pudding. Just do you transform? Do you do what it's willing to do to transform? That's what rock bottom is, is when you do whatever it takes and you become so desperate. Now, you, that might be because you just have you lose a job. That might be when you have uh, a, a near-death experience in a hospital. That might be after 60 years of health. That could also just be when somebody tells you something. It could be when someone wise is like, here. And you say, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I became a vegetarian, right? I, I'm, uh, this was like 30, 13 years ago. And I, was, I was like getting into debates with people. Like, vegetarianism is a good, is bad. I ate meat from, you know, uh, for a long time. And, 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 and so, like, the, the vegetarians would be like, I don't know what, you know, in, in my religion, they'd be like, you shouldn't eat, blah, blah, blah. And I'd be like, and I'd argue with them. And then for some reason, some, some other person was like, hey, you should try this wasn't overly pushy, and then for some reason, yeah, he's right. Okay, I'm vegetarian. Why at that time? I don't know. But that was probably a rock button moment for me. Because from there, I took my baptism. I made my way up. And that was after med school. Um, uh, but the thing is, is that... Uh, uh, a lot of people's hard paths are how, like me, have somebody. Yeah. But you're here. I'm here, yeah. And that's why we say congratulations to people yeah. who get here. Because it's always a choice. A good choice leads to better likelihood of understanding. So good job. Memorize that quote. Asking for help is not weakness. Asking for help is strength. And then it becomes easier to ask for help. And it's okay for wherever you're at. It's okay if, it's, it's, if, if, if it invokes fear to ask for help. That's okay. That's okay. That's honest. It should. If you're honest about, and the people have beaten you down for asking for help, asking for help should invoke fear. But as adults, we can come over that. So thank you for saying that. Did you have another comment? No. Uh, Last comment? Yeah, I was just going to say, as well, reiterating, my sponsor said this to me one time, is that change happens when um, the pain of staying the same is greater than making that change happen. Mm -hmm. and I just, I, that's always stuck with me. Change happens when the... The pain of staying the same is greater than making that change happen. Yes, that's exactly right. That's, that's, that, that's chemistry 101. Mm -hmm. You know, if A and B goes to C, right? That combination happens to produce C, but you need energy. And because it's not an easy thing to join these things, but, you know, so there's a potential energy curve. So when you invest, you start here. If you want to get to C, you got to invest the energy usually in the form of heat. <laughs> in our terms, in the form of suffering. Then, well, if you do it, and you make the change, then you end up at a higher energy place. So, and it's stable. Good. That's all, we'll leave it. We went longer today. I didn't just be going so long. Oh. Uh, I misspoke. Uh, I apologize, but I will uh, uh, leave it at that. Thank you so much.